If you grow daffodils, you'll find that they come back year after year. They're incredibly reliable. They put up with full sun and partial shade. Deer, rabbits and squirrels are reputed not to like them, or I think we all know that there will be deer, rabbits and squirrels that haven't read that and might come back and have a nibble. And they are so much more reliable about coming back than tulips are. I've decided to stop planting tulips in the ground, in fact, because although I adore their showy colours and I think they make a spring garden more than anything, it's so much easier to plant them in pots and then you can put the pots where you like or where you need some colour. But in terms of gardening, this autumn, I'm going to concentrate on daffodils. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog, and I'll put links to any resources I mention in the description below. And if you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads weekly with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. So if you'd like to see the videos when you open up YouTube, tap subscribe. So I decided to do some research on how best to grow daffodils. I have noticed that there's quite a lot of contradictory information around, so I decided to look up the advice from the major bulb suppliers here in the UK and also the advice from some of the more general plant sellers and the major sort of advice sites such as the RHS. In terms of the specialist bulb companies, I looked at De Jaeger, Avon Bulbs, GT Bulbs, Peter Nissen, Bloms Bulbs, and Farmer Gracie. And in terms of the general plant growers and suppliers, I looked at Sarah Raven, Crocus, Thompson and Morgan and the RHS. And in many cases, their advice did tie up. And in other cases, there was a bit of contradiction. So firstly, what's the difference between daffodils and narcissi? Well, there isn't any. Daffodils is the common name, Narcissi is the botanical name. The best time to plant daffodils is in the autumn. In the Northern Hemisphere, that's between September and November. But actually, I've found that you can often plant them a lot later. A friend of mine says that she's even planted her daffodils at the beginning of January and they flowered, although they tend to flower a bit later than they normally do. So where can you grow daffodils? They are really cold hardy. They do well in the US zones three to eight. And they'll do anywhere in the United Kingdom, Northern Europe, the southern parts, the cooler parts of Australia and New Zealand. But they're not so happy in the hotter climates. So if you're sort of moving towards somewhere like Florida or somewhere like that, daffodils are not really likely to be for you. In terms of where you can grow them in the garden, they're happy in both sun and partial shade. And by partial shade, I also mean temporary shade. If you plant daffodils under deciduous trees and shrubs, they have their leaves off during the winter and quite a lot of the spring. And by the time that leaf canopy comes back, casting that part of your garden into shade, the daffodils will have gone back underground again. So a brilliant place to plant daffodils is under or beside deciduous trees and shrubs. One of the commonest reasons for daffodils not flowering is if you plant them in too deep shade. Now I've got some daffodils here, it's a Narcissus thalia and it's a very pretty white daffodil. It's right on the edge of the canopy of a conifer. And of course it wouldn't flower if it was planted any closer to the trunk of that tree, any deeper under the canopy. But at the edge of a canopy, often a bulb gets enough sun and it's happy enough. So when it comes to shade, you might want to experiment a bit. So how do you plant daffodils? The most important thing to remember about planting daffodils is to put them in with the pointy side up. So how deeply do you plant daffodils? Well firstly I'd like to say that pretty much all the sites said that the number one reason for daffodils not flowering is that they've been planted too shallow. After that everyone sort of varied a little bit. Some people said plant it at twice the depth of the bulb, some people said plant it three times the depth of the bulb and some people said plant it four times the depth of the bulb. Most of them said you need definitely 10 or 15 centimetres of soil above the bulb. That's about four to six inches of soil above the bulb once you've replaced the soil. It doesn't sound like much, but actually I think it is easy to plant it a bit too shallowly. And in terms of how far apart you plant the daffodils, there was once again a bit of variation. Was the smallest distance was seven centimetres, the biggest distance was 15 centimetres, so that's between two and a half inches and six inches apart. The RHS suggested that you could plant bulbs about twice the width of the bulb apart. And actually that makes quite a lot of sense because obviously it means that you can plant the smaller bulbs closer together and the larger ones slightly further apart. 
Daffodils do multiply, so if you find you've planted them a bit too far apart, then I think it's quite likely that over the years they will clump out, although that can take a few years. If you're planting daffodils in pots, then you can plant them much closer together. And I must admit, I never plant any of my bulbs close enough together in pots. It looks so lovely if you have pots which are crammed full of tulips or daffodils. And mine are always looking a little tiny bit on the empty side. So I think I should be braver about planting the tulips or the daffodils closer together when they're in pots. Some people use a bulb planter or even an auger, which is like a twisty drill that you can power down. And if you're going to make lots and lots of individual holes, then those two methods are really good. I don't plant huge amounts of daffodils at any one time, so I'm happy to use a small trowel. But actually, it's much easier to sort of dig a big hole or a trench, put all the bulbs in, say five, seven or nine in at once, and then cover the hole up. Now, one of the main areas of disagreement between, as far as I can see, the specialist bulb growers website recommendations on how to plant daffodils and the more generalist recommendations on how to plant daffodils is that some of the more generalist sites say that you should put a slow release fertilizer in when you plant your daffodil bulbs. However, none of the specialist bulb companies suggest this. And I think the reason for that is that the daffodil has everything in its bulb that it needs for flowering the next season. It'll only need fertilizer when it's creating flowering for the season after that. But of course, that could be in three or four months time. And any fertilizer you put in the hole may well have washed away by then. In fact, it probably has. There might be some left. So fertilizer in the planting hole isn't the most effective way of fertilizing daffodils. And I'd also say that I don't think daffodils necessarily need fertilization. Several of the specialist bulb planting companies said that it was a good idea to fertilize daffodils either before flowering, immediately after flowering or during flowering, which gives you a general idea that sometime around the month of flowering, once the green leaves are up, it would be a good idea to add some fertilizer. However, if you compost or mulch your borders, then your soil will be in quite good condition and you may not need extra fertilizer. I do compost and mulch my borders, but I have never fertilized these daffodils and they were planted over 20 years ago by my predecessor in this house. So checking through all the sites, and matching my own experience against it, I would say don't put fertilizer in the planting hole. If you do want extra special flowers, then you could fertilize daffodils in the month around the time they flower. But actually the best thing of all is to add compost or mulch to your border. And then whether you use a bulb planter or you're planting in a hole, you cover them up with soil. And some of the sites suggested that you should water at this stage, but by no means all. If your soil and your climate is very dry, then it's probably a good idea to water. And I think it's no harm to water to get it all settled in. But all of the bulb growing sites were fairly clear that you don't need to water daffodils throughout the winter. If you live in a very dry climate, you may have to water daffodils through the winter, but it possibly means that actually daffodils aren't the best plants for you. So plant them in the hole, pointy side up, no fertilizer, cover them up with soil, water them then, probably a good idea, don't water them again until the leaves start to come up in spring. Now, if you have reasonably rainy spring, you won't need to water your daffodils again. But last year we had an incredibly dry spring and it really affected our bulbs. I didn't actually water any of my daffodils, but I did water some of the tulips and the tulips I watered flowered better and were taller than the ones I didn't water. So if you do have a dry spring, I think probably watering the daffodils is a good idea. But as I keep saying, they're very resilient plants. And actually, you may still get a reasonable showing of flowers if you don't water. So what about having daffodils in the grass and having a beautiful meadow effect? That is lovely. But one thing to remember is that you can't mow the lawn until the daffodil leaves have died back naturally. If you're going to plant daffodils in a lawn, people often suggest that you get a handful of bulbs and you just throw them gently across the lawn and plant them where they land. And that gives a nice natural look. There is one piece of advice about growing and caring for daffodils that everybody is completely in agreement about. And that is that when the daffodil flower is over, you must not take the leaves away until they've gone completely brown and the daffodil has gone dormant. 
The green leaves are what will give you the beautiful flowers next year. There used to be a fashion for people tying up leaves, but actually that isn't helpful. It does stop the plant functioning as it should. Daffodil blindness is something we hear about, which is when your daffodils come up, but they never flower. And you will see various suggestions for sorting out blindness online. People I know who've grown a lot of daffodils say it is quite difficult to bring a daffodil back once it's gone blind. So I think you'll just have to dig them up and throw them away. But it's up to you. I'd be interested to hear if you've had any success with getting your daffodils back once they've gone blind. As a council of perfection, you could also deadhead your daffodils. There's no doubt that deadheading flowers means that they start to focus on their next flower, which in the daffodil bulb will be next year's flower. But equally, if you've got a whole load of daffodils in the lawn or something like that, I think it's quite a lot of work to go around deadheading it. So once again, do deadhead your daffodils. If you've only got a few clumps and you enjoy going out with a pair of snippers in the morning and just snipping them off, that's a good thing to do, but you'll still get flowers the following year if you don't do it. So how to choose daffodils? Well, there are over 13,000 different varieties of daffodil, so I hesitate to recommend one or two. So I'd suggest you start with looking at when they flower. The early daffodils, such as tete -a tete or February Gold, flower here in late winter, early spring. And then there's a huge selection of daffodils that flower in mid-spring. Almost all the daffodils you see in the shops will be flowering in mid-spring. And then there are also a few late flowering daffodils. So apart from that, I would also suggest just thinking about what colour you like, the all whites, the all yellows, the yellows and whites, the apricots, and so on. But I'd also suggest remembering to check the heights when you decide where you want to plant them. Daffodils certainly look best if you have a group of the same kind of daffodil. I've sometimes mixed the daffodils in a group and it doesn't look so good. And everyone always says, the garden designers always say, don't plant your daffodils in a line and don't plant them with one daffodil in one part of the border and another daffodil in the other part of the border. They do look better in groups. Autumn is a brilliant time to plant and plan next year's beautiful garden. So I'm going to put my autumn gardening playlist at the end of this video. And let me know if you think there's any tips on planting daffodils I've left out. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.